So when I was growing up, and in fact, um, for most of my early adult life, pumpkins were just something you cut a face into for Halloween and then you threw it away. Of course, in retrospect, um, that's just crazy. But we've come a long way since then. It wasn't until maybe my 30s when I became more interested in cooking. I lived alone and liked to experiment. And at the same time, butternut squash was becoming all trendy, like it was something completely different to a regular pumpkin. Everyone and their dog were roasting it and then eating soup or whatever. And so was I. Of course, now in our context, the pumpkin is a great source of nutrition and most appealing to me is its ability to form its own protective natural barrier and store for a long time. You grow them, you put them on a shelf, and then when you want to eat one, you take it off the shelf and cook it. Three months later, six months later, maybe even a year later. So I've carefully been researching how to best grow pumpkins and squashes. Well, they're the same thing really, but whatever. And to best grow them in our context. We, we have a short growing season here in Latvia. And pumpkins, as you probably know, can't take a hit of frost. They're basically a tropical vegetable. They love that climate. So I found this method um, that ancient Native Americans used to grow this marvellous vegetable. And it seems to suit the way that I want to grow them here. And I'm pretty sure it would suit you as well. Um, it's pretty easy and of course it's grounded in the wisdom of those clever Native Americans. So here's how it works. First you need to dig a small pit in the ground. I'll talk about whether you need mowed or tilled land a bit later in the video. Now this pit, it doesn't need to be too deep, about 30 centimetres, a foot and about the size of a large dinner plate, may, maybe a little bigger. And then, once we've dug the pit, we need to fill it with lots of nice things to help the pumpkins grow strong and big. So the first thing is ash, a big handful of ash, which is rich in phosphorus and potassium, essential for growing pumpkins. We, we have lots of ash here because we burn wood to keep warm in, in the winter. Next, we add manure. Now, this is cow manure, which we get for free uh, from a farmer down the road. We know it's pesticide free and herbicide free um, because we've been using it for a while and they don't spray hay here in Latvia. This gives the nitrogen for the plants once their roots extend on down. They can tap into these rich layers of nutrients. Then I add a few shovel loads of compost to bring it up to ground level and a bit higher. Um, this is what we'll plant into. Into each pit or mound as it is now, we plant three plants so that they can sprawl out over a wide area. Now, speaking of the area, um, you've already seen that here we have a freshly mowed, unused piece of ground. In fact, this was an old field that had vegetables growing in it. Because we're planting strong seedlings, that's fine. But if you live in an area where you can sow seeds outdoors without the risk of frost, then you might need to till or tarp out the weeds so that they don't compete with the pumpkins. Because we have these good seedlings, by the time the weeds and grass become a threat, the pumpkins will be strong enough to grow through them and they'll shade them out. Uh, I might need to trim a little, but that's fine. Like I just said, I transplant in three strong seedlings into each pit. I've already got a watering can full of water so I can water them in well. And I did add a cup full of my homemade liquid fertilizer, which you can see how I made in a different video, which I'll link up in the corner here. I'll make several pits today in this area, all in a line and about two and a half meters or eight feet apart to give the pumpkins plenty of space to sprawl around freely. It's up to you if you mix the varieties or you just use one variety. Remember, they are likely to cross pollinate, but you'll need to check that um, depending on the variety. However, the fruit that you'll get from this sowing, um, from this seed, is the fruit of the seed that you sow. It's only the seeds from these fruits that you might save that will give you a cross-pollinated variety next year. That could be a fun experiment if you save seeds, 
we have lots of saved seed already so I'm not too worried and anyway I do like to experiment as you probably already know. So here I am doing the whole thing again um, with a time lapse so you can see, see me doing the whole thing. Um, I found actually after a bit of experimentation it was better to put some water in after the ash and the manure and then put the compost on top. And then once I'd planted the three seedlings um, with the turf that I dug up I then put that as a circle ring around. I turned the sods over so that the, the um, the weeds as it were were upside down and then the soils on the top um, and that seemed to work really well actually. So here I am, I'm just doing that ring again as I was just talking about, just taking the turf that I've taken off, turn it upside down and then put it around um, the mound as a ring and uh, that just helps keep all the compost in securely. So um, that's pretty much it, that, you know that's the method um, and uh, as I just explained I changed it a little bit as I was experimenting and you know just making sure at the end that you water everything in so they've got plenty of water on these hot summer days and essentially that's it. So um, I hope you found the video helpful um, and if you've not already got your pumpkins in the ground then I would really you know recommend having a go using this method. So um, if you enjoyed the video give us a thumbs up, um, appreciate that and if you've got any questions or comments leave them below um, and I'll respond to those but all I need to say really is bye for now and I'll see you in the next video.